Everyone, is this thing working today? Okay, and we are recording. Good morning, everyone. Dennis Kay here with Blaze Islands Real Estate. I'd like to give a big shout out to Ann and Susan who got me today's coffee. I just put together some ideas for you, and I'm going to be sending you an email on this of how you can develop that second row lot down south into something that looks like this, have two personal homes on it for you, uh, maybe a thatched roof area in the, in the middle for an outdoor living room, or maybe a garden or something like that. But you definitely don't overcrowd the property. And I think this is a, a great idea for you guys to get you down to Belize, living the dream on Ambergris Key soon. And um, you know, a lot of questions I've been getting lately uh, have been regarding healthcare. You know, healthcare is on the top of mind of people today with COVID-19 and other things. Uh, and the fallout of COVID-19, right? The other medical things that are taking hit because of it. So people are saying, hey, look, if I move to Belize, what are my options for medical care? Well, each part of the country has its own pros and cons, right? Uh, different areas are closer to hospitals, are closer to emergency care. But for the most part, the areas that people are looking at, like Corazon, Placencia, Ambergris Key, Key Cocker, do have very good medical care. And I'm going to go through some of those options for you today, mainly focused on the island of Ambergris Key because, well, that's where I focus on. That's my, uh, you know, that's my specialty. But also, most Americans and Canadians looking to relocate to Belize, the vast majority are looking at Ambergris Key. So let me just tell you what is the uh, situation like on the island with medical care and uh, I'm gonna go through some different websites with you so if I go too fast email me and I'll send you some of these links I'm going to show you today but uh, first of all if I can just do a share screen and show you a couple things I'm gonna be bouncing back and forth a little bit here but uh, for instance first of all when, when people talk about medical care the question that comes up often is how close is the nearest hospital all right, so they want to know if something really bad happens to me, how close am I to an area where they can actually save my life? So the question of medical care oftentimes doesn't, doesn't mean um, do they have good access to things like cancer treatments or whatnot. It, it more means, look, if I get really, really sick, are they going to be able to save my life? Right? How far is that type of medical care away from where I may choose to live? So you know, when you go and you go online, and whether you're from the United States or Canada or other parts of the world, just for fun, Google how far away is the nearest hospital or emergency room services to where you live now, and uh, that's kind of helpful because you know most people think, well, I can get to a hospital in five minutes. Well, actually, most of us can't because of traffic, or maybe we live out in the country or in a rural area. Most of us don't have immediate access to hospitals. Uh, mm -hmm. For example, look at these average times by average minutes of car travel to the nearest hospital by different areas. So you go from 13 minutes, 11.7, 15.8 in the west north central area, um, mountain area, 13.7, Pacific, 11.4. And these are average times, all right? So you gotta take into consideration, most people live in major cities uh, where the, they have hospitals close by, uh, but some people live you know, outside of the country or uh, on, uh, on farms or whatnot. So they don't have immediate access uh, to hospitals. They do have to go quite a distance. You know, uh, Good friends of mine live in uh, Kentucky. They're about a good 45 minutes away from a hospital. So we, we gotta think about that because if you're looking to move to Belize, for one, you're probably pretty healthy, right? You probably don't have any serious uh, medical issues to worry about. So then the question becomes, all right, if I do get hurt, you know, living on Ambergris Key or something really bad happens to me, what can they do to save my life? All right, so the major causes of getting hurt are car accidents. Well, you know, we ride golf carts on the island, and so your, your chance of getting in a car accident are very, very low. But there are accidents that could happen. So let's just kind of go through some of this information here. Uh, here's just more articles on Americans that have the longest travel time to the hospital. Um, first of all, let's look at life expectancy, because I thought, okay, this should be interesting, because, you know, obviously the, the health care in Belize is very different from the health care in the United States. So I was thinking, you know, let, let's look and see how long Belizeans live on average, because we could absolutely say that the, the average health care in Belize is, is underneath the United States, no doubt about it, all right? So when I looked here, the average life expectancy in Belize is 74.36 years. All right, Costa Rica is a bit higher, 
Honduras is a bit higher, but 74.36 years average. This was a 2017 census. Well, how does that compare to the United States? Well, the United States has a 78.54 year of average life expectancy. All right, so you go back and forth, 74.36 to 78, so about a four year difference, right? You might be thinking, wow, you know, those odds don't sound <laughs> don't sound too good. I like those extra four years of life. But look at the difference between the U.S. and the United Kingdom and Canada. Canada has an average life expectancy of four more years than the U.S. All right, so we don't think about oh, if I if a Canadian moves to the United States, their average life expectancy drops. You know, so look at all these things, and you know, so one of the things that contributes to these numbers in the U.S. is their ability or willingness to prolong life at all cost, uh, even when quality of life isn't, isn't, isn't there anymore. So, you know, uh, that's one of the things that uh, we do in the United States is we do keep people alive uh, just, just to the very last day sometimes uh, when their quality of life may not have been there for, for maybe five or 10 years. So just kind of think about that when you're thinking about moving to Belize, your life expectancy, your health expectancy, and what you're looking for as far as medical treatment comes to, comes to in Belize. Also, you got to look at what are the major causes of overall death, all right? So, of course, right now, our COVID-19 is in the news. But when you look at how many people die each day around the world, there are some things that you need to think about. For example, what is your family history when it comes to heart disease or strokes or other things that have a, a good chance of, of killing you, so to speak? So you got to look at your own health. How healthy are you? How well do you take care of yourself? And also, what is your family history like? And if you are prone to uh, having some of these major killers, will give some serious thought as to where in Belize is going to be most beneficial for you. For example, if you're on the island and you develop cancer, all right, well, that's not an emergency where you need to get into a hospital within 20 minutes or you're dead, right? That's a, that's a longer drawn out process. And in Belize, we have excellent hospitals that can treat cancer. And if they recommend, you can go up to Merida, Mexico, which isn't too far from Belize and get excellent care at a world-class hospital in Merida. So if you develop something like that, uh, maybe uh, a respiratory disease or a cancer or uh, you need surgery of some sort and it, it's planned, well, then you have the time to make an educated decision. Do I want to have my surgery in Belize? My wife had her emergency surgery in Belize. We could have gone to Mexico. We could have gone back to the States. But in Belize, it was very inexpensive. Uh, other people have time to think, okay, let's see which hospital is best for me if I have time to plan. And that gives some serious thought as to, uh, to, to some of these things here. Now, as far as, uh, what is this next slide showing? Oh, the, the, let's say, let's go into this one now. The top 20 uh, reasons people go into the emergency room, all right? Because that's a different thing, right? The average distance to a hospital is one thing, right? That means uh, if you're looking to go into a hospital, you're looking, okay, I need to be admitted for uh, a night or several days or several weeks for whatever the case may be. But... A lot of people are asking the difference is, well, what's the difference between going to a hospital and going to an emergency room? Well, an emergency room just means you want care right away, right? So it could be a variety of reasons, including which, well, they need to save your life because something terribly has gone wrong. So we look at the top reasons people go into an emergency room. Number one is obviously they think they're having a heart attack. So you have some chest pain or something's going on, num numbness in the arm. So uh, number one reason. Uh, number two is uh, upper respiratory infection. So you got a sinus infection, cold throat infection. You go there because you really need some antibiotics. You want them to check you out. Uh, number three, urinary tract infection, headaches, uh, unspecified abdominal pain, you know, things like this. So when you look at that, you think, okay, if I'm living on Averagus T, what would I do? If I woke up in the middle of the night and had uh, chest pains or some sort of severe infection where I wanted to get in right away or some, some sort of headache that just won't go away, where would I go? What would I do? Well, here's where I would go. I would go to the uh, one of the many doctor's offices, first of all, uh, on Ambergris Key, because uh, many of them have numbers, 24-hour uh, numbers that you would call. And if it's a true emergency, the doctors will pick up and they'll see you right away. Uh, but also, there's a brand new San Pedro Poly Clinic uh, right to, at the Grand Carib Complex. This is about a mile north of San Pedro Town, so it's easily accessible to anybody living in and around San Pedro and south and anybody living on the north side. 
So for example, uh, right now you're, you're probably not living at Sacred Beach. Many of you are buying property to have a home at Sacred Beach. Uh, this is probably about five miles, maybe, maybe less than five, maybe four and a half miles by golf cart. Uh, so if you're in your home at Secret Beach and you say, you know what, I need to go to the clinic now, get on your golf cart, and four and a half miles later, you're at the Poly Clinic. Now this, these have excellent, um, excellent medical care here. You see, they have doctors on staff. Uh, you have X-ray and ultrasound services there, pharmacy services, and look at this: fully equipped emergency and observation units offering EKGs, hydration, nebulization, minor surgical procedures, and this is important here stabilization for specialist follow-up or for urgent referral to the hospital in Bay City. So you go there, they're gonna, they're gonna do all they can, right? Even if it's a really, really bad emergency, right? Like you got hurt, um, you know, you, you really got hurt and you need medical care now. You get in there, they're going to stabilize you and then they're going to arrange for your transportation if necessary to one of the two best hospitals in the country, which are in Belize City. Uh, those take about um, 15 minutes of flight time using Tropic Air, my island air to get to. And uh, the hospitals in Belize City are very, very close to the local airstrip. So we're not talking about the international airstrip, we're talking about the local airstrip in Belize City. And those two hospitals that I highly recommend and that they recommend are Belize Medical Associates. Okay, so this is right, right in Belize City. Excellent team of doctors here. And also very close to that is Belize Healthcare Partners. Uh, and my wife and I, my wife had surgery here, and a very good friend of mine had surgery at the uh, at the Belize Medical Associates. So let me just show you where those are located on the map so you get a good idea. So if I do a share screen and go to my good old Google Earth photos. And I'll just show you where some of these things are, maybe in relation to Secret Beach, because that's where, you know, like I said, a lot of you have been buying. So let's see, here's the Secret Beach area. Belize Medical Associates is going to be right in here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, let me just go there. I'll show you where that's at. Okay, that's Ocbo. I think Grand Creek's a little bit further. Yeah, so that should be in this area. Let me dial back the overlay here so I can show you this. And uh, where'd you go, Grand Creek? What am I missing here? Did I go too far? Yeah, I went too far. There we go. So this is Grand Creek here, this big, be beautiful complex. And uh, Belize Healthcare Part or uh, Medical Associates Polyclinic, I think, is right here, right in this area here or right here. Oh, maybe it's there. I see a big H. So there's a helicopter landing pad. Is that what that is? That's probably it right there. So that's uh, Belize Medical Associates Polyclinic on the island of Ambergris Key. Now, let's say something goes really wrong and the doctors and then the polyclinics here can't help you out. So they said, okay, we're going to arrange for you to go to Belize City. So let me show you where that's at. So you fly from San Pedro. Here's the airport here. They can either do, do that by helicopter uh, or by Tropic Air, depending. You go not to Ladyville, where the international airport is, but you come here to Belize City, and you see the little airplane here. I'm gonna show you how close Belize Medical Associates is. I haven't looked this up in a long time, and I don't know why, but my, uh, my Google Earth isn't refreshing quickly, so you can't actually see. But it's it's literally just just down the street. All right, so it's it's uh, when you land and get off the plane, I think it's about a two minute drive from the local airstrip here. All right, so I hope that's helpful to you guys. Um, and like I said, a lot of people live full time in the island; they never have a problem. Uh, but it's comforting to know that if you do have something that goes wrong. Uh, they can take care of you. And so for your standard care, you know, you get a cold, you get a flu, you uh, break an ankle, you, um, you know, uh, running off the dock and you hit your head, uh, anything like that, you know, cuts, scrapes, bruises. Uh, I remember we had a guy uh, come in, uh, he was out snorkeling and rare thing, but he was stung by a jellyfish, uh, went into anaphylactic shock and it was scary because we, 
we were sitting in, on the front porch at the Belize Yacht Club, and uh, they carried him off the boat. The guy couldn't even walk and carried him into the, into the doctor's office across the street. And uh, about a couple hours later, we saw him walk out, and the next day he was back snorkeling. And, wow, you know, saved that guy's life. There's another tragic story. I think it was a couple on their honeymoon in, at Victoria House, and uh, they were swimming off the piers in a very dangerous area where there's a lot of boat traffic. And he was actually hit by a boat and uh, leg got caught off at, at the thigh, you know, at right, right in the mid femur. And uh, of course, you know, obviously very serious and uh, saved his life. So they patched him up on, on the, in the doctor's office there in San Pedro, flew in Dubli City, and uh, he ended up being just fine. Uh, did lose his leg, unfortunately. So we had that happen. Uh, another one of my good friends uh, took a really bad fall on some concrete step, steps, had some pretty se 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 severe concussion. Again, went to the uh, hospital in Belize City. They gave him a scan, ended up being okay. But um, so, you know, accidents happen, right? So uh, you can try to be safe, but accidents happen. It's good to know that uh, the medical care on island and in Belize City is very good. And uh, what you can also do too for peace of mind is you can get insurance in Belize. So uh, Steph and I have always used RFNG insurance. Uh, they offer, offer full coverage in the country and also uh, that you can extend that to get coverage in uh, Guatemala City at the hospitals there or in Merida, Mexico. Uh, they're very, very good. And if you travel a lot like we do, uh, then you can get a global policy on yourself. Steph and I have Cigna currently because Cigna covers us uh, anywhere we live in the world and uh, that uh, it's a really good policy. All right, so hopefully this was helpful to you guys. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, concerns, uh, if you have anything specific you need to know. One more suggestion is if you are on any particular sort of uh, medication that's maybe odd or unique, just call the pharmacies in Belize, see if they carry those, maybe call the polyclinic, say, look, I'm on this type of medicine, do you carry it? If not, you may need to get a three or six month prescription in the States and bring that with you, that way you have enough to carry you through. All right, I'll close this out for now. Thanks again, uh, Susan and Ann. Appreciate the coffee this morning and uh, looking forward to uh, jumping on a Zoom call with all of you who are interested in moving to Belize or investing in Belize. Hit me up on the link below and uh, we'll talk to you soon.